here. I'm Jason Montgomery, uh, and today we've got Carrie Horan with Omron, whose presentation on touchless sensors I think is going to be a really good one. Uh, Carrie, welcome. I'm just going to hand it off to you and, and let you go for it. Thank you very much, Jason. Good morning, everybody. And uh, again, welcome to today's webinar, where we'll be detailing some of the advancements Omron has made in sensor technology to serve various touchless needs. My name is Kerry Horan, and for the past two and a half years, I've worked as the product manager for sensing components and sensing technology at Omron. And while there are many different products that we have available within our sensor lineup, uh, today we're really going to focus on key products that have served us well in these touchless applications. Uh, so before we begin, I'd like to first direct everyone's attention to the screen where I've pulled up a poll question to get an idea uh, of what brings you into this webinar. Are you seeking basic touchless solutions for commercial and industrial applications, such as for hands-free switches and controls? Uh, do you have curiosity on Omron's innovation in the healthcare industry, uh, such as for patient monitoring or fever detection, um, or with thermal IR sensors for human detection and occupancy sensing? Uh, I'll give everyone a few seconds to answer that just to kind of get an idea. Um, of what you're searching for, if it's one of those three, or even all of the above or some combination. Um, just to get an idea of what you're looking for, and uh, we'll be covering all of these aspects in today's presentation. So I'll give everyone just a few more seconds. All right. So we'll start with a little bit of our background info. Um, since its founding in 1933, Omron has been a leader in product development to meet ever-evolving social needs within its four industries of healthcare, industrial automation, social systems solutions and service, and those kind of being public work systems such as automatic train ticket machines that are uh, very popular in Japan where our global headquarters is. And then where we come from and what I represent is our electrical and mechanical components, our EMC group. Uh, over the past year, COVID-19 is far and above one of the most impactful events of our time and what's been really driving a lot of innovation these days. And from this pandemic, we've seen a growing need for sensors in various types of touchless and optical applications. In our EMC group, engineers have been hard at work developing new technology to suit these various needs in a wide range of industries. Today, we'll be focusing on key technologies that, ha that we have been recently developing, including our time of flight sensor for reading 2D and 3D environments in real time, including our soon to be developed skeletal detection software, very exciting uh, feature that we're looking to introduce today. Uh, the LED optical sensor, these have been used for touchless applications and control solutions and our thermal IR sensor. These also have been used for touchless applications such as hands-free switches, but also for human detection and occupancy sensing. So to start off, we'll go over our B5L time of flight sensor. This is Omron's latest development in optical sensing, which includes an LED array to perform real-time sensing of moving and stationary objects. The, the sensor gathers distance data across its field of view from the reflection of the LED lights and can utilize these data points to render a 2D and 3D environment. The sensor is collecting this data and outputs at a rate of 20 frames per second, so users can actually read this data in real time. Uh, on the table on the lower left-hand screen, we'll go over some of the advantages that we have over competing sensors. Uh, the B5L time of flight sensor has an interfering light immunity of 100,000 lux, meaning that the sensor is actually able to work effectively even in direct sunlight. The sensor's compensated signals allows it to detect a wide range of objects, including in distance and color, so far away, close up, black or white objects, uh, contributing to its very high precision. Uh, the sensor has a long lifespan partially due to the heat sink that was implemented by our engineers in the recent developments, allowing it to work for up to five years under continuous operation. And lastly, interference prevention allows for up to 17 sensors to work within a small area. This is key for applications such as in automatic, automated robotic systems where several devices may be working simultaneously. 
Oman's time of flight sensor differs from traditional optical sensor sensors due to its detailed data output in the distance gathering applications. Uh, the sensor measures the time it takes for the LED signals to project and reflect off of solid objects, so the sensor can reliably detect any stationary or moving object within its field of view, including its periphery, no matter the color or the material. This makes the sensor ideal for a wide range of applications uh, a wide range of applications, and originally the sensor was designed to suit industrial applications such as the automated mobile robots or AMRs, such as for warehouse navigation or robotics, logistics, and conveyance. Next month, we'll actually have another webinar hosted with EE Tech where we'll detail the advantages of the time of flight sensor specifically for these industries. Uh, but right now, we are focusing on the further development of this sensor as we've seen growing interest in human presence detection applications, particularly in the healthcare industry for elderly care and recovering patient monitoring. The sensor's ability to see the movement in real time without sacrificing human privacy are key advantages in these applications. So as we detail these innovations in healthcare, uh, Omron has really been directing its focus towards this industry. Again, on this slide, we list some of those key advantages, being able to detect 3D environments uh, and also being able to keep the person who's in the frame privacy in mind. Uh, the sensor is not able to distinguish any facial features or be able to see uh, exactly who the person is, but still be able to reliably detect their movement as they go across the screen. Uh, I want to take the time to introduce our developing software that we are planning to implement into the sensor as early as next year. Omron engineers have been developing a skeletal detection program to pair with this sensor, providing an even more crucial advantage in these types of applications. You can see a screenshot here in the lower right, uh, but actually we'll go over now we have a video clip that we are presenting of the sensor in action. Uh, so on this slide, we see it uh, coming up on the screen now. We have uh, the video demonstration. This is actual footage of our time of flight sensor working in real time with the software program that we have completed so far. Uh, we are working on consistent, uh, on more innovations, uh, getting more consistent readouts, being able to detect multiple bodies in the same room. But right now, even in the early iterations of this program, you can see how well it works, even as the body is turning in space, as it's moving around, as the arm crosses over the chest. So we're very excited for the early version of this uh, software and where it's going to go in the near future. So uh, this skeletal detection software will be key for detecting people as uh, they're moving around, if they may be injured or uh, in later iterations, being able to alert in case of falls and track times the patient is sitting, standing, or laying down. So very exciting to be releasing this software with the time of flight sensor. So at this time, I'm going to bring up another poll question about our time of flight sensor. And I'd like to know which feature of the time of flight sensor you find to be most beneficial towards the application that you have in mind. Uh, that being the real-time 3D uh, and 2D environment mapping feature, the ability to work in a wide range of environments, including in direct sunlight, uh, our upcoming body and, skeletal uh, body and skeletal tracking software that we'll be releasing uh, sometime next year, or the long lifespan, being able to operate under five years of continuous operation. I'll give everybody a few seconds to answer that poll question before we move forward. Hey everyone, uh, this is Jason here, the moderator. One thing I should have mentioned while you're filling out these poll questions is that we also do have a Q&A box where you can submit questions for a live Q&A session uh, that I'll be doing with Carrie after his presentation as well. So as you're seeing the stuff he's talking about, please feel free to uh, submit some questions and we'd love to go over those after Carrie's done with his uh, presentation. Yes, thank you very much, Jason. We'll have uh, make sure to leave plenty of time so that any questions you have on, on this sensor, or any other products that, that we'll be mentioning in this presentation, I'll be happy to answer them for you. 
Uh, so next up, we'll go over our next line of optical sensors, the B5W light convergent and our light diffuse sensors. So the Omron B5W sensor uses low energy optical LED technology for object detection purposes, again, across a wide variety of applications. Uh, and the diagram shown on the right, we show a little bit of a demonstration of how the light convergence sensor performs in general applications. The LED light, which we have highlighted in red, projects outward towards the center line of the sensor body. And any object that passes in front of the sensor through the sensing area at the intersecting point between the LED projection and the detector field of view, which we have shown in uh, purple, the intersection between the LED and the detector field of view, uh, any object passing in that sensing area will reflect a signal back to the sensor, triggering an output to alert the system that an object has been detected. Uh, this design that we have is what we call our light convergence sensor. Uh, we also have light diffuse sensors, which I'll bring up uh, later on, as these are more recent developments that we have in place. Uh, you may notice that in between the sensing area and the sensor itself, we have a little bit of an empty space, but this actually allows for the user or the manufacturer to install a clear protective material, such as plastic or glass, to shield the sensor from any dust, liquid, or other contaminants that may affect the sensor over time. The sensor will be able to see through this covering without sacrificing performance, and this allows the B5W to be used in different applications that don't necessarily have to rely on clean spaces. So any area where there can be that protective material over the sensor to make sure that it's not getting in harm's way with dust or liquid, uh, the sensor can still perform reliably in these applications. The sensor is also really unique in its ability to detect any object from black opaque to transparent. We have a graph below in the middle of the screen uh, that shows a little bit of a demonstration of how this, uh, of how well this sensor really performs. Um, we have the ability of this sensor to detect a wide variety of materials, including glossy marble, white and black photo paper, and transparent material. As you can see, the sensor is able to detect each of these different materials with relative ease and consistency, effectively making the sensor an object detection solution that is material agnostic. Uh, this makes the sensor an ideal solution for packaging machines, uh, material cutting machines that may deal with a wide range of material, including woods, plastics, reflective metals, and even uh, medical analysis and lab analysis equipment where the detection of transparent objects may be necessary. Uh, the sensor has been designed by Omron's engineers to uh, have, ver have a superior sensing ability due to its lens design shown in the diagram on the bottom right. The precision of the spherical lens shape allows for a clear focus of the LED signal and the detector, ensuring that the readings are accurate and consistent across that wide range of materials. As Omron continues to build our product line, we continue to improve on this technology, building the best possible sensor to suit your needs. As the need for touchless interfaces continues to be a priority, Omron is working to develop new designs using our B5W technology. Our latest release includes a long distance light diffuse version of this sensor capable of detecting objects over a much longer distance than our current product offering. This sensor uses a light diffuse operation as opposed to light convergent shown in the previous slide, hence its increased range. Uh, and despite this change in design, the sensor is still effective at detecting the presence of all materials, including reflective and transparent, although those ranges do uh, vary depending on the material. The design housing carries over the super miniature design from the B5W LB series, so we have a uh, very, uh, very strong product that's within this small package size, allowing for pretty easy implementation into uh, different products without sacrificing too much real estate. While the sensor alone is able to be effective for any sort of touchless interface, we are developing a new complete module uh, that allows for a visual representation of the switch being activated uh, or of the sensor being activated. This uh, allows for the touchless technology to be utilized in a complete, clean, and modern package design ready to use the existing B5W technology to operate. So it's all within one housing. Uh, 
Uh, as you can see in the uh, bottom picture here, we have put together a demonstration of how the sensor may be used in elevator or control applications. The user can utilize these sensors to navigate which floor they need to go to, and it can ev uh, a user can hover their hand over it to navigate up and down on the floors. Um, so that's one possible application that's utilizing these uh, 3D, 3D touchless switches, as, as we've uh, come to call them at this point. This LED projection can be seen from all angles and will actually animate as the uh, sensor is activated. So the user can easily detect when they're uh, engaging with the sensor, and it gives overall a very modern design to this whole package. Aside from these developments within the optical sensing family, here we show a few of the other applications where the B5W has been uh, very successful. Basic commercial applications such as printers and lockboxes have seen the sensor used in situations where visual object detection is required. The ability of the sensor to detect transparent objects has made it so it's very useful in laboratory and medical applications such as for detecting clear glass containers or microscope slides, test tubes, and then also for beverage dispensing equipment for cup detection applications. Uh, again, this is just a small sampling of how the sensor can be used. Um, we've been seeing these sensors utilized uh, very creatively in a lot of different types of applications. So anything where you're looking for object detection, whether it's object passing within um, a large mechanical device, hands-free detection, touchless solutions. Uh, these B5W sensors have been a great asset to us as we build on uh, addressing the needs of this industry. Uh, so here I bring up another poll where we uh, focus on the B5W sensor. So which feature in the B5W optical sensing family is most advantageous for you in this product innovation? Is that the ability to detect objects over a long distance up to one meter away, uh, the sensing of transparent objects, the small package size for easy product installation, or to function with the upcoming Omron 3D touchless switch? I'll give everybody a minute or two to answer this question before we move on to our uh, final sensing product. All right. Just a few more seconds and we can go to the next slide just to make sure that everyone's got their answers in. All right, so now we'll move on to our final product that uh, we'd like to feature for our touchless technology and that is our D6T thermal IR sensor. Uh, this sensor measures the surface temperature of any object within its field of view using infrared technology and was originally developed as a means to detect human activity within its field of view. This was uh, designed as a direct competitor to traditional PIR sensors, and unlike competing PIR sensors, these products do not require motion in order to work effectively. I think many of us have been in this situation where we're in a room that's using PIR sensors to detect human presence. And if we sit still for too long, the lights will eventually go out. These D6T sensors were designed to solve that issue and constantly detect human presence even when a person may not be moving. Uh, we have a lot of products within the D6T family. Um, the sensor is able to measure several different places simultaneously depending on the resolution. We'll go over the different products that we have to talk about uh, just in a little bit. We see the table here on this slide at the bottom. Um, the sensor uses a digital I squared C function to transmit data. And in the illustration on the right, we demonstrate how this sensor is able to work effectively in a simple environment. As you can see, the sensor is looking over a living room scene. And right now we have demonstrating, we have the four by four pixel sensor that's used to demonstrate this particular feature. Uh, 
As two children are sitting in the room on the right-hand side, the sensor gathers the raw data from each of these 16 pixels, that being the average temperature uh, of each one of, of these different pixels, and then transmits the data via digital I squared C output to the MCU. The customer can then utilize this data to read a grid depicting the range of temperatures detected by the sensor. And as we see those higher temperature outputs, we're able to easily detect the presence of people within the room as they're giving off a much warmer temperature than the surrounding area. Uh, customers and manufacturers can use this data to operate their device based on human presence, again, even as they're sitting still or even lying down. Uh, so bring, I'll, I'll bring everyone's attention to the table on the lower left. Uh, this table gives us a broad overview of the products that we offer within this family. Uh, on the left-hand side, the D6T1A, um, those two part numbers are our more simple cost-effective versions, which output a single picture, pixel excuse me, of temperature data. These one-by-one -one sensors are ideal for close-quartered applications such as internal equipment monitoring and hands-free switches. Um, as we move to the right, we see how the product has evolved into more detailed resolutions, including the 1x8 pixel array, the 4x4, and our highest resolution in the 32x32 sensor. This particular product is very useful in applications where you're looking for human presence detection and are looking for a very detailed view of the person in the field of view. Uh, I know they're a little bit small, but we have details of exactly how a scene may look depending on the sensor that is being utilized. With the 32 by 32, we have a very clear definition of a human figure that's in the screen. So the thermal IR sensor can be used in a wide variety of applications. And on this slide, we've broken these down into three main categories for how they can properly utilize this sensor. For human detection, the sensor is able to accurately determine whether or not a person is present in a given environment or with those single pixel applications, if a hand is present for these uh, touchless switches that can be utilized, that can be, uh, that can utilize the D6T sensors. The temperature readings in a pixel containing a person are typically much higher than the surrounding area so that even when a person is in the frame, the sensor will always be able to detect them as long as they have uh, that much warmer output. This is ideal for applications for uh, human presence detection, such as uh, for air conditioning and lighting controls, as the sensor can be linked to smarter devices so that rooms can be kept in ideal conditions whenever somebody is present. Uh, again, this can, they can also utilize this feature for these touchless applications for hand detection. Secondly, the sensor can work in object detection applications where temperature can influence part quality or temperature can be used in part tracking. The sensor will be able to judge part condition uh, or presence in these cases without uh, any sort of interference. It can be still from a reasonable distance away. For example, in refrigerator applications, the sensor can determine whether or not objects are being kept in proper storage conditions or in conveyor applications, objects that may be warmer or cooler than the surrounding environment can be tracked by the thermal IR sensor as they pass down a manufacturing line. Lastly, the sensor can be used to detect abnormalities in general temperature applications. Applications, where se applications using this sensor in this way include several machines in factory automation or industrial applications. For example, the sensor can be used in power distribution panels as a way to monitor temperature spikes on certain components, which may alert to potential uh, malfunctions in the hardware. This is the one where I mentioned where the single pixel can be very useful as it being close quartered and measuring the temperature of certain objects, making sure they're not overheating, uh, such as wiring or couplings, and can alert the user if there may be a uh, catastrophic situation that may arise from these uh, temperature spikes. Uh, I want to bring up again, uh, during the COVID pandemic, there had been an increased need for devices that may be able to determine whether or not a person is exhibiting fever-like symptoms. We don't see those uh, as, as strong of a need these days, but it's still something that I wanted to touch on as uh, showcasing the ability of how accurate and how useful this sensor can be. 
Uh, while Omron sensor is equipped for standard temperature monitoring applications, we've seen the successful use uh, for de uh, accurately detecting uh, fever for healthcare related applications or for customers looking to develop devices to help control the spread of, of uh, viruses. So Omron offers several advantages for these types of applications. Of course, the theme of this presentation, the sensor is touchless so that it can detect fever-like symptoms while maintaining a safe distance from the user. It can operate effectively up to 50 centimeters away or roughly 20 inches. This makes the product very well suited for entrance areas, check-in kiosks, or walk-through gates. Uh, again, the sensor offers a digital I2C output and board with internal software already equipped for e easy data conversion. There is a temperature conversion process included in the software so the customer can use the sensor without much headache for software installation and can be assured fast results right away uh, after the sensor is plugged in. Lastly, the sensor is easy connect to connect to a new or existing system. The final product includes a PCB board and connector so that the sensor can work as a plug and play solution for almost any device. And its small package size allows for flexibility and design for different types of fever detection devices, including the kiosk handheld or entryway walkthrough devices. Um, all of these had been developed using our sensor for fever detection applications. Uh, so in the illustration below, we have a 4x4 sensor being used in a walk-up type device for temperature detection. And other products that may not have this 4x4 grid away, ag array, again, we're using the 4x4 grid for this uh, sensor. Uh, the full sensing area, uh, excuse me, um, the full sensing area may not give an accurate temperature output as it's getting a lot of the background data. But with the uh, four by four sensor, we can isolate those center pixels that are uh, looking at the person's face and getting an accurate temperature readout while excluding those outer pixels that we have flashing in red. Uh, so this way, no matter where the person is standing, at least when they're in front of the sensor, the sensor can gather a reliable output without being too close to the sensor. Uh, as different users position themselves in front of it, we can also, we've actually developed algorithms to determine where the pixels um, are actually encompassing the whole human face. And then the sensor can exclude the pixels which are gathering too much background information and not getting an accurate readout. So all of these uh, innovations make it uh, a very effective product to keep people safe in areas where cleanliness and health is important. Uh, the final innovation I want to show everybody is our human detection algorithm for room monitoring applications. Uh, with our innovation that we've brought to this sensor, and here we have the 32 by 32 sensor, uh, it's able to detect the number of people present in a room and actually can track and distinguish people from other warmer objects in the room, such as laptops or heaters that may be present, but completely stationary. This makes the sensor a, a key component for applications where a user may be looking for room monitoring applications or, or person detection, where if they're looking from the top down, the sensor can accurately detect where a person is in the room and how many people are present. So we actually have a video demonstration, uh, again, uh, for this particular product. Uh, I believe we have this being pushed out now. Great. Uh, so as you can see in the video, we have that top-down view, which demonstrates how the sensor can not only uh, effectively sense human activity in the room, but can also, again, distinguish and count the number of people present, so to alert the user of human traffic within the area. We have the five people who are sitting in the room, and as they get up one by one to leave, we have the count that's on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, counting and tracking the number of people present in the room. And you can see uh, in real time how quickly the sensor's response is and how uh, accurately it's able to track everybody as they're getting up and moving around. We even have the warmer space, again, occupied by the laptop that's in the bottom of the screen, still not being detected by the sensor as it's able to accurately sense and distinguish 
uh, real people who are moving around from uh, stationary objects that may be in the room. So innovations like these are key goals for Omron engineers as we work to consistently improve our sensing technology to suit growing needs. Uh, so here, again, one last poll question for everybody. I'd like to get to know uh, which product features within the D6T family are most suitable for your project. Would that be the high resolution output, especially by the 32 by 32 sensor uh, that can give us a full picture of the environment and hotspots? The cost effective solutions are single pixel option for close range products that can detect simple heat registers. Uh, our high temperature output, we have several products that can actually work to detect objects up to 200 degrees Celsius or the smart sensing algorithms that can detect human activity and track human presence within an area. I'll give everybody just a few more minutes to answer these questions here. And I'd like to to um, already thank thank everybody for putting in some uh, Q and A questions. Um, we're getting a lot a lot of great questions from the audience here, um, and so very very happy to see the interest growing for for these different products. So uh, we're coming near the end of the presentation. So if you have a few more questions to put in the Q and A, uh, please do so, and I'll be happy to uh, answer them for you. So I'll give everyone just a few more seconds to answer this last poll. All right. So just to sum everything up that we've talked about here, um, at Omron, we are committed to improving lives and contributing to a better society. We believe not only in development of sensors to provide products and increase production in our now growing economy as we've, as we've come out of COVID, um, but also to help create a safer and cleaner living space for all. There are many different products that we have available to suit these needs. Um, I'm very happy to discuss our newest innovations in touchless and optical technology, but there are so many different products that Omron has to offer that fall within our sensor, our, our sensing categories um, that I wish I could share every bit of that information with you. But um, as I said earlier, next month we have another presentation that focuses on our time of flight sensor for industrial applications and AMR. And we will constantly be releasing new material and innovating our product line to suit various needs of customers today. So thank you very much. Again, my name is Kerry Haran, product manager for sensors and modules. I have my email on the screen, kerry.haran at omron.com. If you have any questions about any of our products, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer all of your questions. And to learn more about these products and other sensing, sensing products that we have available, or any of our Omron components, including switches, connectors, and relays, uh, I encourage everybody to please visit our website at components.omron.com. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jason. I'll pass it back to you, and we'll take care of some of these Q&As. Great. Thank you very much, Carrie. Uh, that <clears throat> was, a, was a great presentation. I think that shows just by the volume of, uh, of questions that we're getting in. We're even getting more as I'm talking right now. So let's, mm -hmm. uh, let's spend a little bit of time and dig in here. Um, the first question I'm seeing is, uh, what are Omron's primary goals for innovation in touchless technology? Um, so our primary goals, I mean, it really stems back to our, our company core values, which is, again, improving lives and contributing to a safer society and a better society. Um, our goals really, as we focused on these optical sensing solutions, uh, healthcare and um, safe controls has been a big focus in the past year, especially in the wake of COVID-19. We were very busy uh, in the past year with sensing technology as we have addressed the medical needs uh, for customers who are dealing directly with the issues of this. So um, as we are continuing to improve in those industries, 
Uh, with all of our sensing products, we are always trying to provide innovative solutions to help improve not only general products, but also make sure that we're developing products that uh, overall just improve the day-to-day -day living of, of everybody moving forward. Got it. Thank you very much. Uh, next question that I see here. Aside from innovations on the roadmap, uh, what does the future have in store uh, for Omron sensors and sensing technologies? Um, we have we have a lot of different innovations that we are that, that we're constantly working with uh, with all of our different sensors. Uh, one of the big things that we are working on right now is uh, moving towards. Uh, working to reduce the cost of our product line to make sensors uh, much more affordable while still keeping uh, their high quality performance. Um, we are, while we are releasing a lot of very new and innovative products, such as our time of flight sensor, our B5W light diffuse sensor, uh, we're also releasing new iterations of our product that um, while they're not doing any changes to our existing product line, we're able to reduce the cost of manufacturing and still able to be, to provide a quality product that's going to be very high accuracy, uh, very low noise level, uh, very reliable output. But um, our being able to reduce cost is is certainly a, a goal for a lot of manufacturers today. And we're constantly working to not only uh, expand our product library, but address the needs for um, uh, lower cost manufacturing day to day. Got it. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, I'm going to jump in here with one question. Uh, we've got people asking if the uh, slide deck is going to be shared with attendees after this presentation. And the answer to that is yes. Yes, we will get everyone here uh, a copy of this slide deck so that uh, um, you'll have access to that. And uh, I think there are some questions about uh, people who are here sharing out the slide deck with their own customers. And I know that Omron will be reaching out to those people specifically with some things they need to know um, about how that will all work. So next question for you, Carrie, what are the primary industries that are being targeted with these sensors? Um, so in this presentation, I talked a lot about these uh, touch the solutions and a little bit on, on healthcare, especially with the time of flight sensor. Um, and with the D6T sensor for fever detection applications. Uh, but what, what we really primarily uh, work with, with with a lot of these optical sensors is um, general commercial equipment, industrial equipment, and smart home and building is, is really have been our, our key focuses. I know with optical sensing, a lot uh, there's a lot of need in automa uh, automotive equipment, which unfortunately we don't do uh, much focus on. Uh, with those, we don't have sensors that, uh, unfortunately, are well equipped for the automotive industry. Um, so we really focus on those general commercial applications and smart home and building um, with with these sensors primarily. Uh, if there are specific industries that um, anybody in the audience has and 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 wants to ask more questions on, again, please feel free to reach out directly, and I'd be able to answer the question uh, for the specific application that you have in mind and whether our census would be well suited for that. Got it. Uh, next question here: Are there other sensing solutions that Almron is offering that you haven't been talking about today? Yes. So um, our optical sensors are, are just a, uh, a small piece of what we really offer. Um, our broadest product solutions include our MEM sensor lineup, which include uh, differential pressure, airflow sensors, uh, gauge pressure sensors. Uh, we have a, a very vast product array we have within within uh, those product families. And then our sensing modules include our all-in-one environment sensor, which can detect uh, temperature, humidity, light, barometric pressure, noise level, all in a single package. And those are actually uh, able to work within the IoT space and can connect via Bluetooth to uh, central devices. So. A very exciting product that we have available um, that, that I'd, I'd love to talk about more with anybody who would be interested. Um, and then we also have our, uh, our human vision component, which um, exercises facial recognition software, uh, somewhat related to uh, the TOF, but this one does a lot more with actual um, video processing and being able to read uh, facial mappings. 
Um, and then uh, lastly, we have our sensor evaluation board, which is a product that we have available that can uh, not only do all of the abilities of the environment sensor, but can also test out very easily um, all of our different sensing components, including our MEM sensors, for customers who want to ensure that our product is going to work well for them uh, without having to install their or create their own setup to test everything out effectively. All right, thank you very much. It sounds like there is. Uh, this is just one piece of the larger puzzle, right? That is being oh, yeah. uh, actively uh, actively worked on for sure. Um, this is a question that we got pretty early in the presentation, so you might have uh, you might have covered this explicitly, but maybe we can just recover it again. Uh, is this time of flight sensor touchless, and what distance can the patient be from it? Um, so the time of flight sensor, yes, is 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 touchless in the sense that it can um, detect. Uh, presence of, of people or objects without um, actually um, uh, being too close to them. Uh, it operates at a range. We have a listed specification range at about four meters. Um, that's really with, with general object detection. Um, certain objects can certainly be detected much further. Uh, for general human applications, we've seen the sensor work pretty effectively um, up to six meters away. So um, any reasonable size room, the sensor will likely be able to detect the presence of people um, and objects within the room. Um, as for our skeletal detection program, uh, which I think will be more directly related to the patient and how far that can be, um, we're in the early iterations of that program right now. Currently, the sensor can work, or the software can work at the full range of the time of flight sensor. Um, as we build on this software, I think we'll also continue to build on the distance at which a person can be from the sensor to be effectively detected. So um, just as a brief answer to your question, about four to six meters away, we're getting, we're getting pretty reliable readouts of the human in the frame of the time of flight sensor. Got it. I'm going to jump to another question here, which might be related here. Uh, the full question is, you say the advantage is the DC, B6T will detect static human presence, but what about fast-moving humans in a space? So if it's a time-based thing, mm -hmm. could a fast-moving person escape detection? So the sensor at its factory setting has a response time of about 200 milliseconds. Um, so it really depends how fast that person is moving across the space. Um, that is uh, certainly going to be something that um, we can go over more specifically with the application. Um, we have our factory setting again at 200 milliseconds, but there are ways that we can uh, provide for you, the customer, um, to uh, change the settings within the sensor to get a little bit of a faster response time. Um, and then also increase the accuracy of the sensor with black body calibration. So uh, while we do have our factory settings, which can detect things at a, at a pretty fast pace, um, if that's not fast enough, we have, we have ways of increasing the specifications of the sensor um, through either software manipulation or calibration. Got it. I think a good use case, what, the Tokyo Olympics are, uh, there are a lot of fast-moving people there. You know, we can see how right. <laughs> put into the test there. Um, let's see here. Another question, Carrie, that we've got. Spinning element LIDAR point, point cloud sensors are really popular in automated robotics applications. So how does your time of flight sensor capabilities, how does that differ from those LIDAR sensors that can produce similar real-time point cloud data? Um, in terms of productability, 3D LiDAR sensors and the 3D time of flight sensor are very similar in the operation. We designed our 3D time of flight sensor with the abilities of the 3D LiDAR in mind. The main difference comes down to the cost. Uh, 3D LiDAR solutions uh, can be very expensive up in the couple thousands of, of, of dollars for, for a single unit to work effectively in an AMR system. However, our 3D time of flight sensor is a fraction of the cost, only a couple of hundred dollars for a single unit. So the time of flight sensor as compared to the 3D LiDAR sensor, in terms of abilities, they can be very similar depending on the product that's being tested. But in terms of uh, cost, our sensor offers a much cheaper solution uh, than the traditional 3D LiDAR. 
Uh, thank you very much, Carrie. Another question that I'm seeing here. Uh, can the thermal sensor be used in conjunction with a lens to adjust the allowable distance beyond the stated range in the table? Um, short answer for you is yes. Uh, we have seen these sensors work uh, where we've added lens to narrow the focus and increase the distance of the sensor or widen the focus, which comes unfortunately with a decrease uh, um, uh, distance of the sensor range, but you're getting that much wider output. Uh, we have done some adjustments to our products to uh, suit those needs. It's not something that we have standard, obviously, but it's something that um, we're always willing to work with customers to make adjustments to our existing product line to suit those needs. So that does open it up to all of our different products, not just the D6T, um, but with our airflow sensors or with our, um, our our pressure sensors, we constantly get requests asking for a little bit of an increased range or um, some modification to suit the product more towards the specific application. Our engineers are always able to, willing and able to answer those questions, see what kind of solution and modification we can make to the part uh, to make it more suitable. But um, it, it always will depend on the application, how much range you're looking for, how wide of a view angle uh, we're looking for. Um, always willing to discuss that with with any customer who's, who's looking to make that adjustment. So, um, Certainly, depending on the application, but yes, that's that's we've I've seen that specific use case uh, used and tested successfully. So um, hopefully, we can find an equally successful solution with uh, what you have in mind. Perfect, thank you. And uh, I've got one more question here, folks. If there are other questions coming to mind, uh, definitely we've got a little bit more time for questions. Uh, the one I'm seeing here now is kind of a two pronged question. Do you have supporting software for these sensors? And then if you do, uh, does it run on Linux? Uh, yes, so um, many of our sensors, especially the ones that um, are, such as our time of flight sensor, our D6T with all of our algorithms, uh, we do have um, a lot of our software that's available on GitHub, um, especially with our in, um, uh, sensor evaluation board, we have our sensing uh, our, our sample codes on GitHub uh, to run all this software. Um, for the most part, yes, we, we are able to work on, on some Linux platforms depending on the sensor that's being utilized here. Um, some of our uh, sensors, we are not able to work on Linux, but that is our, um, that, that, that is uh, in some rare cases. So um, for, for the operating software, for the supporting software, especially as we're getting just that basic I squared C data, getting the basic uh, data readouts from the sensor, we're able to work on, on most operating systems. So there should not be an issue there. All right, sounds great. Is there, uh, Carrie, is there anything else you wanna emphasize here or you wanna, you wanna bring up as it looks like we might be close to wrapping up the session here? Um, the the only thing I'd want to bring up is is again I encourage everybody if you have interest in these products to please reach out to me um, or if you are familiar with us and you have and you know your local sales rep uh, reach out to them to get more information on these products. Uh, again, at components.omron.com, we have all the data sheets, all the white paper. I think we're also providing them in the package. Uh, with with this webinar, um, we have all the basic inf information and the data sheets on all the products that we've talked about. But on our website, we have so much more that we that we have to offer: um, switches, connectors, power relays, and other sensing products. Excuse me, and I encourage everybody uh, to take a look at, at at everything we've got. And if you have any questions on your specific applications, uh, I know people are asking more general questions, but any specific applications and any more information that you need about our sensors, please reach out to me again, my email, carry.haran at omron.com. Uh, very happy to answer your questions and to link up with uh, our, our sales team and our engineers to see what solutions that we can bring you. Great, thank you, Carrie. I'll just throw in from my side that I, I, I see Omron as uh, kind of uniquely committed to good customer service and to getting people the actual stuff that they need in order to, you know, to do the stuff that they want to do. And uh, for any, anyone who's wondering, I know that if you reach out to Carrie, 
uh, he is incredibly responsive, incredibly helpful, and will get you where you need to be. So I want to thank you, Carrie. I want to thank everyone here in attendance for joining us here. Um, Jason Montgomery with All About Circuits and EE Tech. I will remind everyone again that there are previous webinars that we've done with Omron. If you go to allaboutcircuits.com and look in the webinar section, you can find this session on demand, others that we've done with them. You'll be able to register for the one that we have, have coming up next month as well. So uh, looking forward to either working with you or one of your colleagues again, uh, Carrie, uh, in a few weeks here. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for your time.